My 32F longtime friend 37F imploded our friendship and blames my husband 37M. Is there any coming back from this? Buckle up. This is long. Too long didn't read at the bottom. Some background I 32F have this friend 37F, who I all refer to as E who I have known forever. Literally. We grew up around each other our parents were friends, but we were never very close when we were younger. I did hang out with her sibling who was closer to my age. When I was 25 and had gotten married, we reconnected and began forming a friendship. She was also married, and pregnant with her first child. Over the course of seven years, she would have two more children, and her husband would leave her when their youngest was nine months old, just days after I'd given birth to my firstborn. Their divorce was rough, and she told me the kids had begun telling her things that lead her to believe he was essaying them. This went on through literal years divorce, custody, etc. To my knowledge, it still isn't completely settled to this day, 3.5 years later. I tried to be there for her as best as I could through all of this. My husband 37M, who I all refer to as S did as well. Her only sibling died shortly after we reconnected, and E and I considered each other sisters. We were aunts to each other's kids, and she referred to my husband as her brother. It truly felt like a familial bond we all had. We loved her parents as well. The story one night, during which the kids were not with her she only had supervised visits with them at this point in time, we went out for some dinner and drinks. I invited her to come over to our place afterwards since we were celebrating our friend's late 20 SF birthday at the pool and thought she could use a fun night. She joined us and throughout the night, we drank and laughed and generally had a good time. It was getting late, and another friend also late 20 SF that was there took my son and I home so could get him to bed the rest of the group consisting of two females, E, and my husband who joined late and hadn't been drinking was just behind us gathering everything to continue the party at our home. After getting my son down, I began getting texts that there was a situation in the parking lot with my friend E. She was supposedly trying to go home and those that remained 20 SF, 30 SF, and S were pleading with her to come back to the house for a bit to sober up and hang out. E locked herself in her car and had what seemed to be some sort of mental breakdown and was screaming, and called her mother. Her mother showed up, convinced that she was sober, and followed her home. Now, I was pretty drunk and began getting texts from me after she'd gotten home. She was very upset with us trying to get her to stay there, saying he was being rude and didn't believe she was sober, and no one else believed her either. The next morning, I told us maybe he should apologize and he got upset with me this is where it gets weird. I started to realize what S was telling me didn't line up with what he had said the night before. I spoke to the other two girls who were there for this privately and separately, and they both told me the same story that S did. All three accounts from them showed that he was acting totally normal walking to the parking lot, and suddenly was locking herself in her vehicle in the passenger side screaming so loud that neighbors came out asking if everything was okay. She was screaming at S, calling him a piece of shit and various other names. The majority of this tantrum was directed at him. The two other girls out there love S, and were really upset at the way he was screaming at him and the things she was saying. I could tell this whole incident really upset my husband. This friend of ours who was like a sister suddenly turned on him and called him every name in the book, when he along with the others was trying to help and make sure she didn't drive after drinking. He didn't understand why she flipped a switch or why him trying to help set her off so much. A week passed and he and I didn't speak much I figured we'd let the dust settle and then discuss this when emotions weren't so heightened. She ended up texting me and mentioned she's still pretty shaken up after the incident and upset about it. I said us was pretty upset as well, and I was too. She got defensive. She then told me that S assaulted and falsely imprisoned her. Now, these are very heavy allegations and honestly made me angry. I told the other girls what he had said and asked if they witnessed such things since they were there for this entire debacle. Both of them said absolutely not, and that the only time S even touched E was when he put his hands on her shoulders trying to calm her both claiming it was in no way aggressive. The false imprisonment statement came from the girls having moved one of their cars behind E's, so that she wouldn't leave S had nothing to do with that nor was it his vehicle. He also said she had to keep her mother from calling the police on S. I believe she was texting or calling her during this meltdown in the car, and who knows what she said in order for her mom to go that far. He states that she was faking drinking to fit and there were people there who didn't drink at all, so that made no sense to me, and was mad that no one believed that she was sober why would we when we saw her drinking. He asked me if I was seriously taking his side when I remotely questioned her accusations. This all set me off. So I told her that her and I needed to sit down with her and talk through all of this. She kept asking why we would need to do that, and saying she'll just get over it. I told her we needed to because we are adults and that's what you do when you have problems in a relationship. She had a lot of court stuff coming up regarding her children, 
so I told her it would be best if we put this to the side and picked it back up after she dealt with all of that because that's where she should focus her energy for he time being it was more important. I also knew that she couldn't think clearly when her children were not in her custody. She agreed, but also wasn't keen on picking it back up and her and I discussing things later. Months went by and I checked in when I knew she had court. It didn't go the way she had hoped, so I began to lose hope that we'd ever be able to discuss this incident in any rational way. I started to realize that I wasn't sure how I would be able to have a friendship with her after this. The accusations she made and whatever she said to her mother that had her wanting to call the police made me feel like I couldn't trust her anymore, and I certainly didn't want her around my husband ever again. More months went by, and I get a long-winded text saying how she missed me and my son. She went on to say how she realizes how angry she is at S and basically how much she hates him, but that she's in therapy she was made to be in therapy due to custody issues. So she's been seeing this therapist for three years dissecting this and trying to love him because she knows she has the ability to. She says that she figures me and S will be together forever so this is what she'll need to do in order to rekindle a relationship with me. Now, this really throws me because through our history she has said how sweet S is, she so badly wanted his approval of a boyfriend she got after her separation, she referred to him as her brother, and even said he's one of the only men her kids love and trust after the alleged essay from their father. So, how did she arrive here? hating him so much, and having so much anger towards him, after years like that. Question mark that, along with alleged fake drinking had my head spinning and questioning everything she's ever done or said. I never responded to her long text. I felt like it was weird in an obsessive type of way for her to be in therapy over me and or my husband, when she hasn't even spoken with me about it much less about maybe what I need, and if I even wanted to rekindle a relationship with her after this. S aside, I personally felt very disrespected by all of this and lost any trust I had in her completely. I don't even know how a relationship would work at this point with the boundaries that would need to be in place to even allow that to happen. I knew she was going through a lot with the divorce custody thing, and I initially tried to give her the benefit of the doubt. Once she got defensive and started victimizing herself, and doubling down with every communication, it left a really bad taste in my mouth towards a friendship. Information E has only ever been in abusive relationships every single one of them. From my perspective, it felt like all of her general hatred of men boiled over onto S that night since he was the only male there. And ever since, she has made this narrative that it's actually all about him personally. Her long-winded text to me came across as if she was speaking to me as if she was some sort of white knight and that I was a battered woman. I read it to my therapist and she even thought it was a bit strange to be so adamant about trying to love S, especially after carrying on so much about how she dislikes him and detailing why she dislikes him so much. I don't care if any of my friends like or love my husband as long as they can at least be respectful and it doesn't interfere with my marriage. So it's really strange to me that she decided that was the way to mend things with me. So, is there any chance of salvaging this? If there is, I can't see how. But that's why I'm asking for outside perspective. Too long didn't read my friend had a mental breakdown and verbally tore my husband to shreds after a party when he and two other female friends tried to keep her from driving after drinking. She claims to have faked drinking and made accusations against him. She's proceeded to double down victimizing herself while everyone there saw what happened and thinks she is wrong. Is there any chance of salvaging this? Why would you want to?